Hello, I hope you're all well. Welcome to Victoria Makes. If you've not been here before, I make lots of things. I upcycle, I bake, and I make things for the home out of often recycled or thrifted materials. And today what I'm doing is using two duvet covers to make a apron dress. And this is the pattern. It is the simplicity 1080 pattern a dotty angel inspired pattern and I'm going to be doing this one which if you have a little look at the back picture it's sleeveless with a tie and it's got two sections of different prints on and it's the actual C dress which is this one and I've got two sheets this was a blue gingham. It's very thin though, and so it'll have to be worn over something else or lined. And then the second one was a duvet cover with a pattern on it. And what I've done is I've cut the bottom section of the duvet off and incorporated. It's got a really nice sort of scalloped edge, and I thought that'd be great for the bottom half. So this is the, the sheets. We've got uh, two duvet covers and I'm cutting it up. Show you how I do it. You have several pattern pieces on the fold and this is going to be the bottom third, this part, and then it is joined onto the pattern on the top, which is the back and the front panel. And again, you cut that on the fold. Number six, just a fold line on this part that you do in the fabric at the top. I've lengthened it slightly because I'm tall and I'm now just, uh, I've sewn these two together and I'm going to flatten them and then sort this out. The pattern says to put some bias tape on, which I haven't got at the moment, so I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to try and uh, do my side seams and pin and tack them up. Also, it says do some stay stitching around the top neckline should be around here, front and back, in the pattern, it says stay stitch front and back neck edges 1.3 centimeters from the cut edge in the direction of the arrows. The stay stitch stays in permanently and helps prevent stretching on the curved edges. It won't be shown. And then the view C, which I'm doing, you pin the bottom number six and seven together and one and seven together and then sew along that line, bias bind it as I said and then you've got pockets to do which are quite simple with a little fold in them so I'm going to just do that now so we're now on to the pockets and what we've done is the pocket piece can be one actual piece only but I've decided to do it into two pieces of fabric to give it a little bit of contrast etc that's your full piece so i've just cut mine in half and sewn it together and then it says to make a pleat on the outside of the pocket fold along the solid lines bring the folds to broken lines and pin based across the raw edge then you take the pocket band which is this piece number five and then you pin it and then it will actually give a bit of contrast on the top so it looked quite nice this i thought having two fabrics as contrast so this part says when you've done that press under a quarter of an inch on one long edge of pocket band and pin right sides of the band to the wrong side of pocket with the raw edges shown so that's what I've done so that's the one that I've done already and then I've pinned the right side of the band to the wrong side of the fabric along the top with the raw edges even and stitch a seam across the top and then what I presume you'll do is you'll fold it back on itself and then turn it over and take it in that section what you've already folded over like so and it will be a nice neat edge when you're finished so it'll look quite a nice jazzy pocket that when it's done so that's what I'm going to do now that's the next step Right, so these are two pockets now, ready to be placed onto the front of the garment. And so far what I've done is I've cut out this, the pockets and I'm going to put lace on and I've put the two tone pockets. So that's going to be roughly what it's going to be like when it's sewn together. So I'm continuing today. So I've cut out all the pattern pieces and I've attached them and then I'm attaching the pockets now 
just pinning them on and then we're going to do some sewing. I told you to do stitching around the top edge and as you can see it's very very thin this fabric so I don't know how it's going to lay. Usually you can do another piece and sew it on and make like an inside bit which makes it look a little bit more flatter but we'll iron it out and see what it's like and then what I'm going to do is see how the pattern is and then I will invest in more expensive fabric and this is what I'm doing because I'm still learning with all these new pattern pieces and it's great to do it with something very very, very cheap and then if it works you can or if it doesn't you can tweak it and then you can actually know what your pattern's all about and then you can go on to buy some expensive fabric etc. Let me show you where I'm up to. And for dress C and all of the dresses you stay stitch around the neckline. That's the first thing to do and that's what I've done. So you start at the top and go down to the middle one direction and then again on the other side you'll start at the top and sew down to the middle. So the pattern, the sewing direction is from top to bottom and hopefully then it doesn't cook up. So you stay stitch that a half an inch from the cut edge in the direction of the arrows. This stitching stays in permanently and helps prevent stretching on curved edges. Stay stitching will not be shown in the following illustrations. And then number two for C, with the right size together, pin the notch edges of the lower front back sections to the lower edge of the front and back matching notches and having raw edges even and then you stitch. Trim your seams and press your seams open. So that's the next stage. You sew the little panel, which we have done. Right, you sew this to this, okay and then you trim it off and then with an iron you press it open so it's nice and flat and they're saying on the strip of single fill bias tape the length of each lower seam on the inside pin the center of the tape over the seam is shown and based along the long, long edges now i haven't got any bias so at the moment i'm not doing that on this because it's really like a test apron dress to make sure it's all in order and all nice and obviously I can come back and do that but also I'll certainly do it on the actual next one that I make. On the outside top stitch is basted and remove the basting so it's to neaten it off on the front and the back and this is a very very thin cotton mix and the fabric that they are recommending that you use is Batik's Calico Chalice Chambray Cotton Lawn, Cotton Types, Dotted Swiss, Islet Gingham, Linen Types, Poplin Shirtings and that sort of thing. And I think that would probably be slightly thicker than this, although it does feel quite thick, this bit is, but this gingham is a little bit finer. But that's fine because as I say I'm practicing with this. So that's it. And then on the actual pockets what I did is I cut the pieces out and it said to pleat it, which was a bit complicated, to put a pleat in the in the middle. Um, but basically what that is, is you've got your, your pocket piece and then to make a pleat on the outside of the pocket, fold along the solid line. So you've got some lines and you pull one side together and then you just sew it across and then it makes a nice little pocket. Okay, and then you, you use the piece number five, which is a long little piece the fabric which was this and then you sew it on and then you pull it round and turn it under and then sew it on the front and I've done that with a zigzag and I've put little lace over to make it a little bit more feminine and softer which I thought really worked got a few bits of lace in my, my box so I'll use that and then you turn it the band out like I say and then what they've done is they've used more double bias tape to put around the outside on the actual apron dress and sewn it in so it's all covered and neat. So I think I'm going to have to do that, aren't I? Because otherwise that pocket is not going to look as neat with it being on the outside. So I'm going to have to go and get some bias tape for that. But what I have found is this rack, and I thought, well, it may be that I could just 
put that all the way around the outer edge and sew that over and carefully make sure that it's all sewn in together. And that would look really lovely. So that would really finish it off nicely with a rip wrap around it, wouldn't it? So I might do that because I want to finish it and I get impatient. And to be honest, I'm quite a long way away from shops. So, you know, where we live is fairly rural and we can't get to a shop without going, you know, about a 35 mile radius to find, find shops. So. But the pattern tells you to use bias binding so that it, it'll cover both sides and then you would sew it in. It'd be a nice, neat edge. It would stop any fraying on the inside as well as the out, wouldn't it? So then, after you've done all that, you go on with the long piece, which is going to be a tie, number two, and you press under three eighths of an inch on one end of the tie, fold the tie end in half, lengthwise with the wrong size together, and press, set in a crease. So then you've got it all nice and neat, and then you'll sew it along. And that is easier than sewing it together and trying to turn it inside out and pull it out, because believe you me, that's so hard. And then on the outside of your dress, you centre tie and over the small dot that you've got on the front, having the raw end extended one centimetre over the broken line, base close to the raw edge of the tied end. Now I've got to be very careful with that because tying this into a thin piece of fabric, you know, you don't want to be really pulling at it when it's finished, otherwise you could tear the fabric, wouldn't you? To make the tucks in the front, on the inside, bring broken lines together and baste. Press tuck away from the centre, baste across the ends of broken lines. So each of these are quite simple, you know, it's a fairly easy pattern. I don't think it tells you if it's easy or hard or anything on this, which is good if, if they do put that because then when you're buying things you can kind of tell if you can do it or not if you're only a beginner but we don't always put that on nowadays, they used to in the past. So let's get cracking and I'll show you each stage as I do it. It's a nice jazzy little pattern, we'll get sewing it all together now and I'll keep showing you as I go along and I'll tell you of any mistakes that I'm making and what not to do. Um, so you can obviously avoid it if you do this pattern. If there's anything else that you know that I could have done better as well, please leave that in the comments because that'll help me when I make up the next one when I've bought expensive material. So I'm going to have myself a cappuccino and uh, get stuck in with the pattern. So the main thing about when you're putting a pocket on is to make sure that it is centred and in equal, the position is equal on both sides of course. And we need to do it in the middle and also straight. Right, measuring out now the rick rack to make sure I've got enough to go on around both of the pockets. Lovely, yes I have. So now I'm going to just get this rip, rip rack and attach, first of all, with a very small zigzag stitch, the pocket onto the dress. And then we can go over with the rip rack. Take this back. I made this yes, yesterday. What I had is a tablecloth that was stained, a lace one. And so I've used all, I've obviously had to get rid of the, the staining, but I've put some blue and white check fabric over the middle but left all the lace around the edge and made a lovely tablecloth out of it. And so getting rid of the tablecloth I've been able to use it again which is really nice. And I made some blue and white cushions to go on the pew and cushions on the chair and I've also backed with the blue and white the screen so I've got one side floral and the other side blue and white check so I can change it as I wish. In the dresser cupboard I've lined those with floral some time ago so it all is floral and blue check now so I can either have it flowery or just you know a blue check for other times when I don't want the flowers you know it gives you a little bit of a, a change. So that's that so I'm going to be able to sew that down to get that all even and then this one I want to make sure they're both even of course. I've been watching some YouTube channels lately of ladies who are doing dressmaking. There's some really good ones 
people really, really know how to sew really well. And yeah, it's inspired me to get sewing again. I used to sew quite a bit when I was about 18, 19. Just sort of basic sort of tops and skirts and then go out to the nightclub in them. You know, there was no pressure on them to be perfect. Um, it's a bit like fast fashion really, you know, it was just a couple of metres of fabric made into a skirt and off out in it for the night and then probably won't wear it much again and then make something else, you know, but you need to sort of, then when you get a bit older, to try and uh, make sure that what you're doing is really a finished article that's what it's supposed to be, you know, you can't get away with it being too shoddy, can you? But hopefully, it just get better. Years ago, they used to have like night classes and things where you could, or day classes where you could just go and learn and make things. But I think funding's gone nowadays and we haven't got anything really where I am anyway. So I think the only thing you can keep doing is just trial and error. And that's why I thought, well, the best thing to do is just to get something like very cheap material and go around and in the sales, you, you know, there's places now that are selling all sorts of. You want it new, you can often get sheets from the supermarkets, you know, very, very cheap. You're right then, so we've got our two pockets on now, hopefully. They are even and look nice. Just pin that around the edge and then sew in the middle of it. And all the way around. So I'm just using the edge of a pin to pull the brick right down over the edge of edge to make sure that it just is sewn in the right position as it's sewn. Because it has a tendency just to slide up underneath the sewing machine foot. You don't get your, your line always exactly straight, just in case of doing it little by little as you go along. It's pulling over now. Pin it, use that pin and pin it down so as it slides under, as it sews it, it catches it in the right place. Push that rip rack underneath. Just do it little by little. And the good thing about the rip rack, because it's not straight and it's all wavy, then you don't have to be totally straight the stitching because you know obviously the nature of it is it's wavy so it won't look odd if the stitching is wavy. Put it back. And you can see the pockets all covered up with the rip rack. Right the next Let's go on to the next stage. Right, so we're doing the ties now. Right, we've got our two pieces, two lengths of fabric, which are going to be the ties. And it says on one of them, turn it under about an inch and press it down and iron it flat. And then open out the long edges of the tie end and turn them wrong side so that they meet at the crease. So you basically turn the end over and then you're gonna turn them inside the edges so that both edges equally meet in the middle. So you're folding it in on itself and then you'll iron it. It might be easy just to iron it first.
Right, what I'm doing now is I'm putting these pleats and tucks in and then I'm incorporating the tie into one of the tucks so that when it's sewn in it will catch the tie in the seam. And what I will do probably is pop the rest of the tie in the pocket and then it won't get caught when I sew the side seams up later. So just make sure you get the tucks of both sides of the dress in the same position and the tires of course and what I usually do is measure luckily for me at the minute I've got gingham so I'm just going to follow the boxes along to make sure that it's in the same position on both sides but obviously that's where your tailor's chalk comes in making sure that you've marked out everything I've also made my tucks longer with me being tall uh, I've dropped the tucks down a little bit so that hopefully they'll go a little bit under the bust more. It'll fit me and look better. Okay, so we're going to now, on the machine, sew in these tucks and attach the tie pull cord. Right then, so now what I've done is I've done those tucks. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this light, but it brings them in and gives them a nice good pleat. And then we've got the tie attached on both sides so you've got your two I've stuffed the ties into the pockets on either side at the moment so that when I do the side seams they won't get caught up in the sewing machine and it's coming along quite nicely now so let's we'll see what the next stage is again um, always keep an eye on your length and your measurements all patterns are not equal of course lengthen them shorten them etc and change them the top tip about um, patterns I've learnt is not cut every single piece and use it trace it you know i've cut this out but i think what i might do now is because i know i really like it i'm going to get some greaseproof paper and i'll trace the pattern onto the greaseproof paper so i've got a copy and then i can actually start basting through the pattern which makes it really helpful and then you don't damage your original pattern piece uh, and i've not done that today and if you don't so you know, your, your stitches and your basting and your dots through the pattern onto your fabric before you sew, it does make it harder to transfer it to the exact pin point. So I'd certainly definitely do that. Transfer your pattern onto greaseproof so that it makes it easier for the next stage, you know, and then you can use your pattern again and again then. So I've done the tucks or pleats, whatever you want to call them. And so we're going to go on to the next part now. So that's one, yeah, one page done. That's always nice because you think, oh, we're getting a bit nearer. And the general directions are quite handy as well because another thing I get um, sometimes mistaken about, and it's so simple, is when they draw the fabric and the designs on paper, I used to think, well, how do I know what's the right side and the wrong side? It's not always clear and they don't always say it. However, you'll see that one of the pattern pieces looks totally white and the other one shaded. And so it'll tell you on here, for example, if you want double thickness, you fold the fabric with the right sides together. If you want single fit thickness, place the fabric the right side up. But then it'll tell you what the shaded fabrics mean and what the plain fabrics mean. So one is you know, the right side up and then the shaded one is a pattern printed side down, you know. So this should tell you everything that you need to know, your pattern. And also some really great sewing books about, you know, so I'm going to get myself reading those thoroughly through so I get an idea of basically how every, every stitch is done, basically. So we're now on to number 16 on the pattern piece and it says here on the outside stitch an eighth of an inch from the fold between the basting as shown and remove the basting. So that's that little bit out and then um, that is so that again it comes in a little bit at the waist and it gives it just a little bit of a pleat on the waistband. Now my problem being my waist is a little bit lower than me being taller. So I've got to be careful there because if I do that, then it might be a lot higher and then look odd. So always check on your pattern piece where your waist is or, you know, when they refer to the instructions, just check if, you know, that's going to sit well for yourself. And then we're going to do right sides together, pin the front to the back at the sh shoulder seams, matching the notches and having the raw edges even and stitching a 3 eighths of an inch or a one centimetre seam. 
then trim the seams and press them open. So I'm going to put my right sides together now. This is the fun part. And this also is the part where you really got to make sure that you get it right. Because for example, I'm here, I want my check and my pattern pieces, the seams correct. You don't want it so that when you open it up, you've got a big distance. Because that won't look right at all. You have to be bang on when you sew it so that the seam is really correct. And so that it doesn't start drifting down. I also pin it across as well. And that way it tends to uh, hold together around. So what we're doing now is with right sides together, pinning the front and the back at shoulder seams, matching the notches and having raw edges even and stitching in a one centimetre steam, trimming the seams to an eighth of an inch and press the seams open. Right, so I'm just having another coffee and a little break while I uh, assess the pattern and see how I move forward with it. As I said, I'm going to do those shoulder seams now. Now, on the picture, it just shows that the shoulder is just slightly, you know, come the slip, there's no sleeve as such. It just kind of comes around the arm and it's saying that you put bias binding around. Now this is a top tip, always check your pattern and buy all the items and the notions that you require before you start, otherwise like me you'll find that you haven't got bias binding and so can't complete it in the time that you may have allowed for yourself. Um, so I must look in my sewing box and see exactly what I've got and see if I can use something other than a bias binding on the sleeves because obviously as there isn't a sleeve and it just kind of only goes over the shoulder and at the moment the raw edges if I just turned it in on itself it, it wouldn't look very professional because it's very thin fabric so you do need something to finish it off hence the bias binding so I'll have a little look and see what I can find I know I've got some old bias binding that I picked up in a charity shop years and years ago didn't even know what it was, um, but when I've opened it, the packet, it's not clean really, it's been bleached by the sun in part, so it's not going to be suitable for this project. You can make your own bias binding, and there are videos on YouTube for that, it is quite easy actually, very similar to the tie that we've made today. So there's lots and lots of dressmaking patterns that you can find in the shops, and there's lots of sales often, so keep a look out, it's online and hobby craft as well often have half price sales and that's a great time to buy your patterns. Now also in the charity shops will sell uh, patterns as well. Yeah so I was saying about the same patterns wasn't I? I live in a house with lots of people in it and I'm always having to stop and start my videos because there's always someone coming in. This is a kitchen diner so um, forgive me if I repeat myself or <laughs> Um, we jump onto different things because it's quite hard to keep concentration at all. Um, yeah, so lots of lovely patterns. Um, keep an eye out for them, you know, and keep an eye on the sales, of course, and grab a bargain when you can. If you've not done any sewing before, it's good to look for patterns that say easy. Top tip for old fashioned patterns. I love things, and a lot of people do the vintage patterns, but the vintage sizes are not like the sizes of today. Um, all the sizes now have sort of increased over the years. We've all got bigger, um, really, and taller, and different sort of body shapes, etc. Whereas in the 40s and the 50s and other different uh, decades, your pattern sizes are slightly different. So check. You know, it's not to say you can't use them, of course, but be very, very careful on the sizes and check your measurements and adapt it to your own personal measurements. So, yeah, if you can find a great vintage pattern, grab it, but obviously be mindful of the fact that it won't be a standard size, so you will have to tweak it to suit you, of course. But you can grab a bargain in the charity shops. Often a lot of these patterns haven't even been used and you can pay £20 for a pattern these days. Also, as I mentioned before, lots of different companies do half price sales and no hobby craft do. And online there's quite a few um, sewing patterns and sewing fabric websites and they often run uh, sales etc so it's a great time to, to back them up hopefully then in the future and i'm confident that i know that i can make something and it's absolutely perfect 
I can then spend 14, 15 pounds a meter on, on some fabric of my choice. But at the minute I'm just making it for a bit of fun and also to learn the skills along the way. So it's not costing me a lot of money. So this was two duvet covers. And out of that I've made other things as well. Like I said, I've used part of the duvet cover to back a screen that I've got. And the work, the work in progress as well. So let's get going. So let's do the seam on the shoulder. Right, so what I've been doing, I thought I'd do now, instead I've not got the base binding, I've got a little bit of that, that rick rack left. I thought what I'll do is put the rick rack around the front neckline. I thought it'd look really nice. I'm just going to uh, pin it all the way around. It will actually tie in with the front where the pockets are as well. Yeah, this will be lovely around the, the top again now. It's going, I'm, I've got enough for the back and the front, so that solves that. I just wish I'd got enough for the arm, around the arms as well, actually. I don't know if I can find some in a shop another day. I can't even remember where I bought this from. It might have been Hobbycraft or The Range, but that's going back some years because we haven't got any near us at all. A long way away. It's a case of using up all what you've got in your boxes and bags and sewing notions etc. Using them up and making something unique. So I'll carry on pinning it all around and then we'll stitch it all in place. And that will give a nice neat outline to the neckline. I've just found this beautiful, I've got quite a few of these old Silco vintage cottons. And that's kind of quite nice. Nice match that to that little rick rack. So I'm going to put that on so because the last time I used the other one with white thread, you could see it. Whereas actually, if we put this nice silco on, it'll blend in to the rick rack much better, won't it? So let's get this all threaded up and get this rick rack sewn around the neckline now. Right, so I've put two darts in the back as per the instructions, all the tucks are in the front, ties on round the neck we've done now it's just the arm holes and then sewing the seam up and the hem to do right no bias binding but in my lovely little notions stash box i shall show you what i've got which should actually prove useful so just looking in this box which i've upcycled myself i just got it from hobbycraft and uh, popped some nice foreign ball paint on it and stuck things inside and out to make it a little bit more me <laughs> and there's all sorts of little bits that I've collected and I keep coming back to to see what I've, what I've made this is this one that I was on about it's a bit a little bit grubby that that's your base binding of course and lots of buttons and nice little bits and bobs in there for use for whenever I can use them on projects And I found this, but there isn't enough. It's a little heart ribbon, which is nice. Some little pom poms as well. But I've got some creamy rack, rick rack, in here. That might be all right. Buttons, of course, elastic. Some more little bits and bobs. And notions, but I think that's probably about all. So I think I might do this. I might turn that sleeve under and put some cream rick rack on. Nice sort of fancy sort of pearlized ribbon as well in here. So and there's a bit of that lace what I used on the pocket, but there's not enough. So I think rick rack we might be okay with. So if you've not got rick rack and you're going to do the bias binding, the pattern says the following. Cut a strip of single fold bias tape the length of each shoulder seam and on the inside pin the centre of the tape over the seam as shown and base along the edges. Okay, which is that and that. On the outside, top stitch as basted and then remove your basting. So you then 
go over with the sewing machine and then remove your temporary basting. Open out one edge of the single fold bias tape with the right sides together pin the tape to the neck edge having crease uh, having a crease three eighths of an inch one centimeter from the raw edge. Turn under and lapping one end at the center back and stitch in three eighths of an inch seam. Trim the seam, clip curves if necessary on the edges to let it go smoothly. But what I'm going to do is do the same seam allowance, turn it under like I did with the neckline and then what I'm going to do is put the rip rack on the top. Right, I'm just going to turn the hem up now, that's the next job and then we'll try it on and see what it's like. 